Well, let me just give you, first of all, the working definition of what we said toxic was. Or, well, first of all, we'll give you a definition of influence. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or the effect itself. And so, in other words, when we talk about toxic influences, influences we said that toxic is anything that's poisonous or containing harmful material that can lead to sickness or death. And so when we talk about toxic influences today, we're going to be talking about things that are influencing you, that are harmful to you, things that are influencing you, that are harmful to your life, to your spiritual life, that can lead to sickness or even death. Have you heard of a DUI before driving under the what? Influence. Driving under the influence. When you hear of these things called DUIs, what it's saying is this. You know what? The alcohol had complete and total control over the person that was operating the vehicle. In other words, there's some things in your life that has control over your life. Let me say it again. I know it's real quiet, but let me say it one more time. There's some things in your life that has control over your life. There are many of you inside here today that are influenced by a whole lot of things and the truth of the matter is a lot of people don't even recognize that they're influenced by it. And so when we talk about toxic influences, we're talking about the things that control you. We're talking about the things, amen, that would, okay, you ever seen, I seen a commercial years ago um, where they had, you know, an anti-drug commercial and it was really an anti-drug commercial that showed that young people are like puppets in the hand of a puppet master. They were showing that, you know what, whenever you find yourself smoking or, or drinking too much or doing things you shouldn't do, it's like there's something that's, that's controlling you like a puppet master. And so many people are puppets in the hand of whatever it is that's controlling them. Look at somebody say, he's talking to you and not me, he's talking to <laughs> There's a lot of people that are under the control of a whole lot of things. They're like, they're like puppets and there's a master the string. And so here's where we're going today. We're going to talk about how easy it is for us to be under toxic, poisonous influences that are driving us and pulling our strings. And then we'll discover how to protect ourselves uh, from those toxic influences. And so we say that influence then is the capacity to have an effect on the character. Somebody say character. character. And I told you last week that when you hang out with the wrong friends, because friends is a type of influence, they can have an effect on your character so much that you don't even recognize yourself. You'll be doing some stuff that you don't even, that you yourself would shock yourself. Now, for those of you that have never been on a spring break, that have never been to college, then I'm not talking to you. <laughs> but if you've ever been on spring break, ever been to college, you probably have done some stuff that shocked yourself. You was like, man, I didn't know that was in me. <laughs> I didn't know I could have done that. <laughs> and so, and so there's some things that we don't even know, amen, that's, that's of influence us, but we're going to discover them, and then of course we're going to find out, amen, how to protect ourselves. Let me say this, amen, and you can go ahead and move, I don't know if Carson's, okay. Amen, guess what, sorry, that's our main text. Our main text is this, you ran well, somebody say you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion, everybody say persuasion. persuasion. Okay, so this is meaning talking about your influence. The thing that's directing you. The thing that's causing your mindset. The thing that's causing your direction to be influenced. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you, but he says, watch this, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Let me just say this, every single individual, no matter who you are, how old you are, how young you are, every single individual has an influence or something in their lives that's going to persuade them elsewhere. I don't care if you're saved, I don't care if you aren't a Christian, I don't care if you aren't a follower of Christ or a disciple. Listen, every single one of you have an influence in your life that's directing you someplace. Every single one of you. And a lot of people like to come in church and act like they're so saved and, and they, they're just so perfect and that there's nothing wrong with their life. But can I tell you, just this past week, some of you had some toxic influences in your life. Just yesterday, some of you had to deal with some toxic influences in your life. Somebody say, I know that's right. Yeah. What is the influence that you're dealing with? Every single individual, no matter who you are, will have to deal with toxic influence. 
if you got a pulse, if you are alive, amen, there are certain things in the environment, there are certain things that you'll find yourself around that will always be a struggle, that will always be a pull, that will always be a distraction, that will always try to take you in a different direction than you're supposed to go in. And so no matter who you are, you will have toxic influence. This is what sociologists identify, amen, as social influence. There are four levels uh, of social influence then, or the environments that we're in. Because if you're in an environment, if you're in the world, you're going to have an influence. First of all, they say there's something called compliance. This is when people appear to agree with others, but actually keep their dissenting opinions private. That means you go ahead and you're around a few people and these people doing a whole lot of stuff. Even though you don't agree with it, you still sit there and you just comply with it. You know, I, I remember being around a few of my uncles and, and they would sit there and they would be talking about a whole lot of negative stuff. They would be talking about this girl, that girl. And, and I know I'm a Christian. I know I'm a believer. I know I'm a Christ follower. And so at the end of the day, uh, I'm sitting there and I'm hearing them talk about all these negative things and I don't ever, ever get up and say to them, man, I don't think y'all should be talking about this. Because after all, we don't want to see him like we the sore thumb. We don't want to see him like we killing the party. How much of you ever had somebody around you, you ready to party, amen, like it's 1999, and then the minute they come around you, they say something that just kill your vibe. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. I'm glad for you gave me first of all. But you're, 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 you're ready to party, amen, and you're ready to do this thing, but then all of a sudden there's somebody, here's what they become. They become your conscience. Because after all, when you're not conscious of what you're doing, here is somebody all of a sudden out of nowhere that says to themselves, I gotta stand up and say, listen, you shouldn't be doing this. You don't like to be around those kind of people too much, don't you? <laughs> because the minute you're around those kind of people, watch what happens. It causes you to kind of not comply to what is going on around you, or they're not complying. So how much of you have ever been there where you kept quiet when you know you should have said something? <laughs> So, so when you don't say something, sociologists say that then you're complying, you're being influenced. And then of course there's identification. This is where people are influenced by someone who is liked or respected, such as a celebrity. Now, mainly a lot of young people have to deal with this issue. And some of these adults too. But I remember, let me tell you, I remember when Puff Daddy uh, was doing this, uh, this long run, he was doing a charity run, and, and Puff Daddy, Diddy, whoever you know him as, you know, Sean John, uh, whoever you know him as, he, he decided he's going to come up with this hairstyle. And he had this mohawk. And, uh, you know, black folks don't wear mohawks. <laughs> but, but Puff Daddy decided, I'm going to come up with some mohawk. And all of a sudden, I'm saying to myself, man, this dude looks crazy. But can I tell y'all three days later? Yeah. <laughs> Every little black boy decided, I want a mohawk. Why? Because what they do is they identify with celebrity. They identify with someone they like. And so what's what they want to do? They want to look like them. They want to act like them. They want to talk like them. Some of y'all ladies, I, I hope I never see it from no one in Relevant Kingdom Center, but y'all know uh, Rihanna just bust off this dress with them so wasky crystals. Yes. And it was all over the news. I mean, and, um, people dying and starving in Africa, and they have news with Rihanna and so wasky. But I mean, Rihanna had on this dress, and I mean, she didn't leave nothing to the imagination. But can I tell you, there are a lot of little young girls that gonna look at Rihanna and say, you know what? She's a celebrity. She's somebody I look up to. As a result, you're gonna have a lot of little girls that try to wear those same kind of dresses. How much of you are ever young and when you watch Superman, you wanted to be Superman? 
Sushira, got some older folks. Iman. Okay? I remember when I first watched Superman. I tell you no lie. I took a cake or a blanket and I tied it around me. I climbed up my grandmother's tree. And I said to myself, if Superman can do it, I can do it. <laughs> but see, what happens is when we look at somebody that we, we idolize or, or we want to be like, we identify with them and they easily influence us. Can I just tell y'all, amen, not just celebrities influence people, and I wish y'all are, uh, y'all people was, yeah, I know they all going away and having a good time, but can I just tell you, you guys in this place, especially us adults, can I tell you, there are people that are looking up to you. Yes. There are people that are looking at your life and saying, you know what, I want to be just like them. I want to act like them. I want to dress like them. I want to look like them. So you got to remember, you have got influence. I want everyone to say this with me. Say, I, I have, influence. have influence. Okay, you don't believe that. Amen. I want you to say it like you know it. Say, I, I have, have influence. influence. Because there are people that are looking at you and they want to identify with you because they respect you or they like you. And then a lot of y'all believe you're famous anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Of course, there's the internalization aspect of it. This is when people accept a belief or behavior and agree both publicly and privately. Okay, I accept this. I accept the fact that this is what it is. And I agree with it, not just in public, but also in private. It becomes a lifestyle. And then there's one more. Amen. There's one more. Go to the next screen if, the, if, if it's up. There's one more. It's called conformity. Conformity is a type of social influence involving a change in behavior, a belief, or a thinking to align with those of others or to align with the normative standards. You're not just complying here, but you're converted. This means somebody influenced you to put down something that you once believed and you put down what you were once believing in and totally accepted something completely new. There are a lot of you right now, you don't believe like you used to believe years ago. There's a lot of you that, that, that have allowed certain people and certain things to cause you to put down your belief. And let me tell you what happens. A lot of times, young ladies, who get hooked up with the wrong kind of men, they will put down what they believe just so that they can, you know, attract or be liked by these particular men. People that want to be accepted, they will put down what they believe just so that they can be accepted. And so we talk about these different types of influence because here's it. All of us are in some category. Your social influences then can corrupt and desensitize your spiritual life. So whatever's influencing you, you've got to ask yourself, is it corrupting me? Is it desensitizing me? What is it, amen, that's your biggest influence? What is it that's controlling you? Are you desensitized to certain things that you should be sensitive to? And so the question is, what is your influence? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. what is your biggest influence? Uh, Brother Kelly, I'm going to switch mics. Today, I'm going to switch mics. What is your biggest influence? Look at the next neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. There's, something there's something that's influencing you. Yeah, and your influence can corrupt you. Your influence can build you up. Your influence can, can break you down. Your influence can put you in the right direction or the wrong direction. What is your influence? What controls your belief? What do you believe? Why do you believe it? Are you believing it just because everybody is believing it? Or are you believing it because you are convicted and truly convinced by it? 
That's why I say a lot of people are puppets in the hand of a puppeteer. Because a lot of Christians even believe a lot of stuff that they don't even know why they believe it. A lot of folks go to church and they believe everything somebody spew at them. And they don't even know why they believe it. Why? Are you believing what you believe? What's influencing your beliefs? What's influencing your character? Ask yourself, why am I acting this way? What kind of character do I have? Look at your influence. What's influencing your ideals or your morals or your behavior? Is it the world or is it the word? Is it your environment? Or is it God that's truly directing your influence? Here's what Paul says. Here's what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, and some, some scriptures say, I urge you. That means I beg you. Everybody say, I beg you. I beg you. He says, I beg you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God. Everybody say mercies. mercies. Let me tell you why I love that he put that there. I love that he put mercies there because all of us, like I said, are susceptible to certain influences. And Paul says, listen, I have urged you, I beg you by the mercies of God. How much of you know you need mercy? Amen. Inside this day and time. You need grace. Amen. You just, you just can't do this thing on your own. And I thank God for mercy because ain't none of us perfect. And even myself, at times, I'm influenced by some things that I know I shouldn't allow to influence me. But Paul says, I beg you by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Let me tell you what I tell people about living sacrifices. A living sacrifice can get up off the altar. A dead sacrifice up to stay there. But a living sacrifice can get up. That means some of you, even though you say, God, I'm going to present myself as a living sacrifice. You let Denzel walk past. <laughs> you off the altar. <laughs> Some of you say, God, I'll present myself as a living sacrifice, but let something you like show up. You're off the altar. He says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Everybody say this next word. Say, holy. holy. See, holy means to be set apart. Holy means to be different, to be taken out of. Come here, my shell. I just sanctified my shell from this entire audience. I took her from just looking and being like everybody else. And I took her and I sanctified her and set her apart. Now, guess what? All of your eyes are on her. <laughs> your eyes are on her because she ain't doing what all of y'all are doing. She has now set herself apart by standing up. And now guess what? All eyes on her. Here's what God's saying. God is saying when I make you holy, I'm going to set you so apart that guess what? People are going to be watching you. People are going to be looking at you. Because you ain't going to be like everybody else. Thank you so much, Michelle. She, she living, she could stay up here or she could go back. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he says, I'm going to set you apart. So I want you to be set apart. I don't want you to be like everybody else. Now, see, that's some good preaching and all school folks would have gone crazy. But us young school folks know that even though that's good preaching, it ain't easy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 It ain't easy. Because even if you ain't looking for negative influences to come, can I tell you what happens? They just show right up. Amen. Even if you ain't look, you know, I tell people trouble have a way of finding you at times. You don't always have to go looking for it. Sometimes it comes looking for you. Because you could be minding your own business, doing your own thing, and all of a sudden, something come to influence you that cause you to get out of the character that God expects you to be in. Somebody say holy. Holy. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed. Don't, don't comply. Don't identify. Hallelujah. Don't internalize. Don't conform to this world. In other words, don't be influenced. Don't be led astray. Don't be distracted. Somebody say, don't be distracted. Even now, can 
can I tell you whenever you're getting ready to preach messages like this, for some reason, the distractions just stop. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the enemy knows if we can truly internalize this, then there's no way he can cause us to conform to what's around us. And so he says, he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. In other words, be different. Everybody say different. Different. I'm different. Yes, I'm different. <laughs> All right? Be different. Be different from this world. So Paul is saying to, you, to them, hey, I want you to be careful of what influences you. I want you to be careful of the society that you're surrounded with. Because not just because it's in society means it should be good. Not just because it's around you means you are to let it influence you. He says, so be different. I want you to, to have a difference between the church and the world. I want you to be different from an unbeliever. Yes. There is a time now where we can't tell the difference between the world and the church. Because everything the world is doing, the church is doing. Everything that's affecting, amen, people in the world that you would never think would affect the church, you see it now in the church more than you would see it well. That's why a lot of people are turned off by the church. Because they say, why should I come to church? Then the church ain't no different from me. Say it. Why should I attend church when people in the church acting just like me? Yes. What's different about you? That's why Rather the Kingdom said, oh, when you go in the community of Exuma, I've got to ask you, what sets you apart from everybody else? Can somebody see? That there's something different about you. Look at your neighbor and say, are you different? Are you different? Now that don't mean it's being weird. <laughs> <laughs> that don't mean walk, amen, downtown with your big old Bible. Thus says the Lord. That don't mean, amen, you got to be, amen, a freak or a weird. Amen, why? Because the Bible says, watch this, you are in the world, but not of the world. That don't mean you have to even separate yourself, amen, from a whole lot of things. It just means that you got to identify with God and don't allow the things that you are around to pull you back. And so he said, I want you to be different. So be careful of what influences you. Be careful, amen, of what you allow to influence your character, your behavior, and your ideals. And be totally controlled, amen, by what's out there in the world. But he says, watch this, I want you to be controlled by what's in the world. Look at your neighbor say, who's influencing you? Hallelujah. Who's influencing you now with this message? I don't want offense. I don't want y'all to come in here and think now, Pastor Dury, he going to come and be legalistic. Because can I tell you, I know it's easy to be legalistic. I know it's easy, amen, to put up a whole lot of things that the Bible never say you ain't supposed to do just because I don't want you to sin. And the reason why a lot of y'all quiet is because maybe you came from a background where you heard this kind of preaching and they tell you you couldn't do a whole lot of things. Um, there's a, there, what's the next side there? So, so, so y'all remember the Pharisees, right? The Pharisees and Jesus never could have get along because the Pharisees always put up a whole lot of rules and regulations that God himself never put on people. And I, and I'm threading a thin line with this message because I say, God, I don't want to be legalistic. I don't want people to think that I'm going to come here and tell them how to live their lives. And so the Pharisees did this thing called fencing. In other words, they would tell you, you can't wear no makeup. You can't go out and do this. You can't be around that. And so they put you in a box. They tell you, don't you dare go to the movie theater. Half of this generation couldn't make it in church if it was still like that. Don't you dare go out to the fish fry. Don't you dare listen to that kind of music. 
Don't you dare do this. And so what they do is they fence because what they wanted to do was protect you from the elements that was on the old side there that had the propensity, amen, to distract you. But here's what I want to tell you. You've got to let the Holy Spirit guide and direct your life for yourself. You've got to allow God, amen, to tell you, amen, this is what I want you to do. This is what I don't want you to do. And you got to know the word of God in order for you to follow the word rather than the world. And so no preacher got to tell you not to do certain things. There's some conviction that should be on the inside of you because of the word that you got that tells you, you know what, I'm not going to do it. Not because everybody's doing it, just because I feel that this is my conviction. And so, amen, they place God in a box and confine him to man-made limits. And watch this, they nullify the cross. They nullify grace. Whenever you tell people a whole lot of things that the Bible never tell them not to do, or you, you try to put a lot of restrictions on people, can I tell you, amen, you cost them, amen, watch this, to nullify grace. See, you cost them, amen, to get to a place where grace and mercy don't have no place no more because now it's really legalistic. And so at the end of the day, amen, there's some legalistic approaches. There's some legalistic things, amen, that people put on you. There's some things that people, amen, will try to put and say, you can do this, you can do that. I just want to read a scripture out of Galatians 5 verse 1 to 2. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us what? Free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. That means if you come to the place where you get legalistic and say, I can't do this and can't do that and put up all restrictions. He says, if you can follow, if you can be so harsh with one law, I want you now to keep the whole thing. How much of y'all believe y'all could keep the whole law? Ain't none of us could do it. He says, watch this. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. Everybody say grace. And so I'm not going to restrict you. I'm not going to, amen, tell you anything that you shouldn't do. So uh, what are some potentially toxic influences? It could be the movies you watch. How much of y'all go to the movies again? Raise your hand. Look all of the sinners, Amen. <laughs> How much you go to the movies? Raise your hand. I love the movies. I cannot wait for vacation. The first thing I want to do is go to a movies. Exuma of us deprived. Amen. I want to go and I want to, I want to have the surround sound. Amen. I want to be able to have some popcorn and some nachos and some hot dog and just smell the movie theater. I like movies. Amen. I love movies. Um, but, but it could be the movies we watch. It could be the music. How much of y'all like music? I love music. I love music. I absolutely love music. How much of y'all like all kinds of music? How much of y'all only like country? How much of y'all only like rap? You know? How much of y'all like love songs? <laughs> Look at all of them. Hey, woo! Come back to church. Come back to church. Amen. How much of y'all like uh, rake and scrape? And calypso. Gurn down Burma Road. Gurn down Burma Road. Don't lick nobody. <laughs> okay. It could be the music you listen to. It could be, amen, what we view on television. It could be the internet sites we go to that's influencing us yeah it could be the social media sites like Facebook can I just tell y'all when I go on my Facebook news feed even if I'm looking for nothing bad all I see is the bad I don't know who have sex tape out there but all of a sudden you go on your Facebook news feed and it just popping right up because at the end of the day even social sites have no restrictions have no limitations, and you're 12 year old seeing the same things that I see in. You're 11 year old exposed to the same things that I'm exposed to. 
okay? It could be uh, the internet sites, it could be the social media sites. Um, you know, looking at pictures of friends doing stuff on Facebook, like I said, or reading tweets that are un un unhelpful. It could be the magazines that we read. It could be the video games that we play. It could be the people that we hang out with, like I talked about last week. And I got to tell you, every one of us got a toxic influence. Somebody y'all didn't say, no, that's right. Hallelujah. Here's what a scripture says. Here's what Paul says this. Go to the next screen, please. Here's what Proverbs says. Amen. Proverbs says this. Like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. Let me read that again. Like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain is a righteous man who gives way before the the wicked that means when you allow the wicked or the evil or the things of this world to influence you you become like a muddied spring or you become like a polluted fountain he says this it's not good to eat much honey or is it glorious to seek one's own glory a man without self-control look at somebody say you gotta have self-control yeah, in this world we living in today, you got to have self-control. When I was in college, I had to have self because without self-control, you're like a city broken down and left without walls. When the Bible says you're like a city broken without walls, in those days and time, if a city didn't have walls, it could have easily been invaded by outside forces and as a result, overtaken. And the Bible says when you allow every and anything to overtake you, to influence you, guess what? Then you will fall for every single thing. Because you don't have that type of self-control that's necessary. How much of you would swim in the muddy water? How much of you would drink from a polluted fountain? Well, every time you allow yourself to be influenced in the negative direction, guess what? You become that muddy fountain or the, that polluted fountain or that muddy water. And a lot of times we feel like we can always get away with a little bit of negativity, a little bit of sin. It won't hurt anyone. It's just a little bit of, of nudity. It's less a little bit of obscenity. And so at the end of the day, I'm even preaching to myself because can I tell you, I've found out that you can't just even only listen to your conscience. Because you know the Bible says our conscience can be sad. You can listen to someone, something so long that you could feel like it's okay. You can watch something so long that you could feel it's okay. And you can convince yourself, ain't nothing wrong with this. It's just a little bit of fun. It's just a little bit of, of, of weed. My uncle who on coke right now, he started off with a little bit. And so we could get desensitized. And so at the end of the day, amen, I can tell you, the first thing when it comes to toxic influence, you got to remember, and I'm almost done, watch this, is this. Go to the next screen. A little bit of poison goes along. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This influence does not come from him who calls you a little. Everybody say a little. A little leaven leavens the, whole, le le leavens the whole lump. That means the little bit of stuff you allowing in your life affecting your entire life. I read the story about a young boy, uh, Sister Daniels, that went to his mom and said, Mom, I want to go to the movies with my friends. The mom said, did you check out uh, the rating? He said, yeah, I'm 14, it's PG-13. And just get a little bit of nudity. You get one um, scene of violence. But you know, that's just, that's it, Mom. It ain't nothing much. And so she said, okay, son, you could go ahead and go to the movie since it's just a little bit. Um, she said, but before you go to the movies, I want to make you your favorite dessert. I want to make you some brownies. Um, so go in the shower. Well, get yourself together and uh, I'm gonna make your brownies for you and uh, then you can go to the movies no problem so she went as she was getting the ingredients for the brownies she went out into the backyard and she got a little bit of dog poop just a just a little bit not much just just a very very little bit you couldn't even smell it nothing I mean just a a little bit and so she was mixing that brownie and she put that little bit of dog poop in there. And so her son came out and he said, Mom, man, those brownies look good. Man, you're the best. I tell you, my mom letting me go see a PG-13 and she making me brownies. She said, son, I just got to tell you, though, before you eat these brownies, I put a little bit, just a little bit of dog poop in there. He said, Mom, what did you do? 
You just mess up the whole thing. There's no way I can eat that. That's nasty. So she said, son, this is no different from the movie you're about to see. Because it just got a little bit of obscenity. It just got a little bit of nudity. It just got a little bit of poop. And so a lot of people say, Pastor Dury, that ain't going to influence me because it's only a little bit. I only let them call and say sweet things in my ears a little bit. Pastor Dury, I'm only doing just a little bit. And so at the end of the day, a little bit of poison goes a what? Look at somebody say, be careful a little bit. Hallelujah. You know, for me, I could tell you, I watched this movie. How much of y'all watch Hangover? <laughs> How much of y'all didn't watch Hangover? How much of y'all don't care to watch Hangover? All right. I remember I was watching Hangover. And Hangover was funny as ever for me. I mean, I was dying. I was, I was crying laughing. But this was the first one. But can I tell you all, I didn't go to see the second one. And I even believe they may have had a third. But I didn't go to see any of them after I found out that it had so much of what I was desensitized to. Because watch this, I started off with just a little bit. Because first, if anyone missing, say, amen, uh, GD, in their conversation on movies, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I never used to listen to it. Never used to watch it. I was so sensitive. I was so convicted. But all of a sudden, I say, man, that ain't hurting nobody. But then I gone from just them saying a little bit to a whole lot of things. Watch what I found out when I went to this website, plugged in about Hangover after I laughed about it. Hangover had 91 different versions of the F-bomb. That's a F word per minute. Every minute in that movie, they had an F bomb. There was 41 S words. Nine slang terms for the male private parts. Two for the female. 13 hells. 14 A words. 31 different versions of God's name and vain. 31 different versions of God, Jesus, GD, and such. 31 different versions of God name and This doesn't include the innumerable sexual references and sexual sins. How much of y'all would still listen to me and still come to church if I start saying all sorts of obscenities? Raise your hand. Someone raised their hand in the box say, but I still come in. <laughs> Not much of you would come, right? Why? Because that would be offensive. For you, you would say that has no business in the church. But what is the church? Is the church just the building? Is the church just the four walls? No, what is the church? The church is you and I. And so we say, Pastor Dury, you can't mix the secular like that with the holy. Because that just ain't right. But you guys go and pay to watch this. You go and spend your money and you buy popcorn and you buy a hot dog and y'all know the movie theater expensive. To listen to all of this. Everybody say a little bit of poison goes a long way. And I'm trying y'all to get rid a little bit. It ain't easy, but I'm trying to get rid of a little bit. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, be careful of a little bit. The second thing is this, and I wish our teenagers was here. Amen. Hallelujah. The second thing is this. Amen. The second thing is just because everyone's doing it doesn't make it right. Go to that screen. Just because everyone's doing it doesn't make it right. Look at your neighbor and say, just because everyone's doing it, don't make it right. Will you jump off a bridge because everybody's doing it? Will you drink poison just because everybody's doing it? 
Watch what it says. It says this in Romans 12. And so there, brothers, I plead with you, and this is a different version of what we read earlier. I plead with you to present your bodies. Let them be a living sacrifice, holy, the kind we accept. When you think of what he has done for you, is this too much to ask? Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. Just because everybody doing it don't mean you got to do it. Sometimes it's best to stand out. Sometimes it's best to say, you know what, I'm going to keep myself over here while everybody else over there. Because you know what, not because they're doing it means I have to do it. You know, when I think about Numbers chapter 10, because a lot of people says, you know what, you got to do what the majority of people doing. You got to accept what the majority of people accepted. When I think about Numbers chapter 13, when, the, when the, the 12 spies went into the land, how much spies came back and said, we can't take this land? 10 except for how much had they listened to the two they would have taken the land a long time but they listened to the they listened to everybody else can I ask you a question are you doing things just because everybody else doing it are you wearing things just because everybody else wearing it are you driving things just because everybody else driving it? How much of y'all could say, I'm my own person? That means I'm going to do what everybody else doing. That's why I don't even like to go to churches where everybody got to dress alike, look alike, talk alike, sing alike. You know, I don't like to go in places where people try to make me conform to them. Because guess what? God has made me an individual. God has set me apart. There ain't nobody like me. Amen. I am my own self. As a matter of fact, you do the world an injustice when you try to be like everybody else. Amen. Why? Because God planted you on this planet and he planted you on this planet and you're the only one like you. Look at your neighbor say, you're the only one like you. Hallelujah. So I'm not trying to be like you and I don't need you to try to be like me. Guess what? I'm going to stand on my own because guess what? That's how God created me to be. He created me to be my individual self. Every young person that on the inside of me and here, listen to me. I'm telling you, your friends may say, hey, everybody is doing it. But just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. Somebody holler, I know that's right. Amen. Here's the third thing and we're done. Here's the third thing. Just because I could doesn't mean I should. Let me say it again. Just because I could doesn't mean I what? Everything Paul says is permissible for me. That means you guys got freedom. You guys got liberty. You could do whatever you want to do. But he says, watch this, but not everything is what? In other words, how much of y'all could have a drink? I could have a drink. Does that mean I'm going to hell? No. But maybe it may not be beneficial for you. Maybe it may not be beneficial for me because I can't handle it. He says, everything is permissible for me, but I will not be what? mastered in other words I'm gonna be a puppet I'm not gonna be controlled you want me to tell you how I identify whether I get in control by things I identify it if you see me can put it down for at least a week I realize I'm controlled by that if you see me can do without something for a week that means I am being mastered by that and a lot of people looking at a whole lot of different things but how much of y'all know y'all could be mastered by food because when pastor called for a fast, and I say, we going on a seven-day fast, y'all look like y'all going to drop right there. <laughs> because you were mastered by food. That's why God even inc incorporates fast. That's why he says, you know what? You ought to fast. Why? Because when you fast, it proves, amen, that you are not controlled by the elements of this world and that you could not be mastered by things. Some of y'all need to master, um, some of y'all need to actually fast Facebook. I know me. I'd be on there every day, every minute. If you want to get me and you can't get me on my phone, just send me one Facebook message. 
Every day, I'm on Facebook. And the other day, I promised myself, and y'all pray for me because I'm trying to fast it and it hard. I said to myself, I ain't going on Facebook today. Man, that day, I sitting there, I start getting little withdrawals. I start scratching. I, then finally I say, I can't take it, let me see. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could be mastered by things. You could be mastered by things so easily. See, a lot of things you say, man, I could do it, but let me ask you a question. How much of you could give it up in a heartbeat? It depends. <laughs> but you can't be mastered. Somebody say, don't be mastered. Don't be mastered. I want to leave you all with these three um, things. Lift these three things on how to not allow these things to master you. How to not be uh, controlled. First of all, live by the Spirit. Everybody say, live by the Spirit. In other words, he's saying, here's what you need to do. You need to now start to be influenced by the Spirit of God. Y'all know this is Pentecost Sunday. And the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, they were all up in one room, and the Holy Spirit came in. Amen. There was a mighty rushing wind. There was the Holy Spirit that showed up like cloven tongues of fire. And watch what happened. They all began to speak in these new tongues, these heavenly tongues. And watch what happened. It was Pentecost, so you had men, amen, from all different settlements, amen, that were speaking all different language there. And when they were up and the man heard them speaking in these languages watch what the man said the man said these dudes drunk they are under the influence of something they talking a, a bunch of babble but then they were talking in some of the known languages and Peter got up and said y'all guess what I promise you we ain't under the influence of alcohol I promise you we're not under the influence of anything negative. But he said, I can tell you this. This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. This is that we are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's why I can tell you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to direct your life, and you become sensitive to the Holy Spirit in your life, you ain't going to be easily influenced by everything around you. I can tell you, the Holy Spirit convicts me easy when I'm doing things that I ain't supposed to do. When I get that word on the inside of me and I'm bastard or I'm surrounded by things I know I shouldn't be around, the Holy Spirit says, Dury, you got to catch yourself. And so he says, live by the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the... Look at your neighbor say, live by the Spirit. Here's the thing. The other thing, test everything with the Word of God. If you want to know what's right, don't listen to what your pastor say. Don't listen to what your prayer partners say. Test everything with the... Don't even be influenced. That's why I told you all, don't just be influenced with what I babble from the pulpit at times. No, when you go home, if something is sad right with you, go home and you get this word for yourself and you test everything that I said with this word. When you go someplace and you feeling uneasy, Test it with the word. And when you get the word, then ain't nothing or nobody could influence you otherwise. So I am going to test things with the word. Okay, I want to go see this movie with the word. Say about this kind of thing. Okay, I want to date this kind of person. Let me see what the word say. Okay, I want to use this kind of language. Let me see what the... I want to dress this kind of way. Let me see what the... Should I tithe? Let me see with the... <laughs> Hallelujah. What the tithe used for? Should the pastor even be getting paid? Let me see with the... You test everything with the... Look at your neighbor say, test it. Hallelujah. Test it with the word. And thirdly and lastly, you have to start to stay away from some things. In 1 Corinthians 5, that's right, I don't cast it. In 1 Corinthians 5, here is what Paul said. Paul says, guys, y'all have a fella inside this church that's sleeping with his father's wife. And y'all around here acting like it's cool. Oh, ain't no one getting hurt by it. That's their business. That's their to do. Paul says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that fellow out of there. Let me tell you why. Because he says a little leaven. 
leavens the whole lump. He said, in other words, there's some things in your life that you got to just take out. There's some people in your life, you know they're not the right influence for you. You've just got to take them. There's some things in your life that you can't handle. Not everybody can handle a drink. Because I know it's the holiday weekend. Not everybody can all handle it because, because at the end of the day, you will take too much. Not everybody, amen, can handle certain things. Not everybody can handle certain movies. See, now, that, that's why I tell you, I don't want to get legalistic. See, not everybody can handle certain music, movies. You have to be spiritually matured. Not everybody can handle certain music. Some of y'all can listen to some things and you ain't going to do what the music say. Some of y'all going to watch some things and y'all ain't going to put on a cape and fly off of your grandmother tree. Some of you could be in certain environments. And it don't move you at all. It ain't gonna cost you to give up your faith if you go sit down by fish fry. But some of y'all, when you go to fish fry, it can remind you of too much of when you used to be in the club, and then all of a sudden you go find yourself in the middle of the dance floor. So you gotta ask yourself, what is it that I need to take away? What is it that I need to pull out of my life? Who is it that I gotta cut out? of my life if you don't want to be influenced if you don't want to be like a muddied spring or a polluted fountain you've got to say to yourself how can i live by the spirit should i test everything by the word of god and what is it who is it i need to stay away from and the bottom line is this don't allow your spirituality to be influenced by toxic sociology change your environment without your environment changing you let me say it again you change your environment without your environment changing you you don't have to be a puppet in the hand of a toxic master but you can be free for who the son has set free is free indeed do I get any free people inside here today come on do I have any free people inside here today that say I will not be influenced I will not be controlled I will not be mastered by anything that is not of God but I am more than a conqueror through Christ that gives me strength greater is he that lives on the inside of me than he that lives in the world look at somebody say i will not be influenced by toxic poisonous things in jesus name pray with me father i pray for every person under the sound of my voice i pray god that today that you would strengthen us father god that you would strengthen from the preacher to the person sitting in the in the very last pew strengthen us god because there's so many things in our environment there's so many influences that are trying to distract us, that are trying to pull us away from who it is you've called us to be. There's so much things, God, that are leading us in the wrong direction. And I ask, God, that you, your Holy Spirit, would shine the light on things in our lives that we've been mastered by. Things in our lives that we've been controlled by. Father God, only you can break the bondages, the chains father god that hold us and so today i pray for every person under the sound of my voice father god that their chains would be broken i pray god heavenly father god that for every person under the sound of my voice that they would live a life of freedom father god a life free father god of every poisonous toxic thing that seeks to kill and to destroy their lives we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise because we will not be influenced by toxic negative things in Jesus mighty name and if you know that you're free and that you're able amen to live free in the world amen that may be bound I need you to give God the best praise that you could give him come on you could do better than that give God the best praise you could give him